everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm Bella Stone, and if you're new here, this is where you can always jump into to know about the latest gadgets. We explore all of their different features and see if they live up to them. At the end of each of my videos, we also talk about animal of the day. It's just a fun ending to each video. If you are coming back, thank you so much. We really appreciate you. And here's a special thank you from the kittens. So, do you want to say hi? Okay. Hi, boo. Do you have anything to say? Okay. I'm so, so excited to talk about the event that I attended for four days called PAX East. For those of you who aren't familiar with PAX, it stands for Penny Arcade Expo. It was originally created by this company that was rolling out comics and editorial content of what they claimed was nerd stuff. They wanted to create a huge environment full of events and fun activities for that specific community of gaming, anime, and comic lovers. An incredible event packed with free play, tournaments, exposition halls, concerts, different panels, and of course, the Omegathon. The first thing I did was go in and get my badge. When you go in, there's a huge pile of lanyards that you can just pick up. So I did just that, which was actually very handy for when I went through the different exposition hall stands and they shared different pins with me for a lot of the different games that I really enjoyed from indie developers, as well as some charities that I went into to check out. But there's a lot of things I wanna break down and share with you. So let's get right into the video. I decided to one wheel to PAX on the last day because I found out that CodeCheck could hold my board once I arrived. Just a heads up in case you want to do the same. The first three days, however, I walked to the event, both ways, which ended up being around 6 to 11 miles a day. PAX Arena is the spot to go to if you want to watch amateur esport competitions. The first one we see here today is StreamStar's influencer-based tournament for Fall Guys Extravaganza. The prize is a total of $5,000 and PAX attendees also have a chance to play and sabotage the influencer players. Next was the Almost Pro Splitgate Premier Esports Tournament of PAX. Attendees can sign up in teams of four. The prize for this tournament came up to $10,000, doubling the Fall Guys extravaganza reward. This was the tournament's ending interview, and I also wanted to give a shout out to that awesome Totoro shirt. Lastly, of course I had to add in here the Valorant Collegiate Open Qualifiers match with the reward of $7,500. You can also choose to go into different common rooms like the handheld lounge, PC, and console free play. Here we have Crazy Taxi, one of my favorite games. The speedrunning area had games like The Legend of Zelda, Silent Hill 4, Mario Party Superstars, and many others. 
The Omegathon is comprised of 16 teams that are paired in groups of two to compete in games throughout the weekend, the final round being a secret game. These teams are randomly chosen from the pre-registered attendees. The first game they played was the Fling to the Finish, which eliminates 16 teams, aka half of them. The second game they played was regular human basketball, which then again eliminated half of them, leaving a total of eight players. I clearly understand and enjoy this event of dunking build, like all us humans do. The third game was surprisingly a board game called Fire Tower. It eliminated four players, leaving the last two finalists. Different communities met up for the Pokemon League, Bioshock Cosplay, Overwatch Cosplay, and many others. There were food trucks in the courtyard and in the exposition hall. I do wish they had more vegetarian options. I would have loved some impossible meat dishes. Let's first go to Intel. Intel was definitely the largest booth at PAX. Intel featured some awesome art from the community. There was also this booth for cool art pieces by Bryce Co. Draws. Now let's go to Discord. Discord had a really fun and colorful camp theme. Wampus also made an adorable appearance. Here we have the Child's Play Charity. They provide therapeutic games and technology to children's hospitals, clinics, and domestic violence shelters worldwide. Their pen said, play games, feel better. They also have some swag on their website from water bottles, hats, clothes, pins, bags, and more. This is what I picked up when visiting their booth. They packaged everything for me in their reusable tote and threw in some stickers too. I also got their liftoff robot pin. Lastly, I got their Gamers Give Back hoodie, which I didn't see on their website, so it must have been exclusive to PAX, maybe? Oh my gosh. Aww. I'm trying to film the hoodie and booze just lie down right on it. I was finally able to film the hoodie style, so here you go. As we saw, Boo definitely approved of it. Sully also enjoyed it. I would also recommend checking out PAX Together. They bring together nonprofits and different community groups to celebrate diversity. They also had many different panels to elevate minorities, LGBTQ, and mental health communities. I picked up this pin from the booth that was empowering women to become developers in the gaming industry. I do want to start off by saying is if you are planning on attending a PAX in the future, one piece of advice is get the PAX app right away. That's where you can see the full schedule, see exactly which booths are in the exposition halls that you want to check out and have them mapped. So let's see how we can use the PAX app to get ready for the events. Go into your app store and search for the PAX mobile app. This is where you'll see your PAX event guide. You can always come here to see the show and expo hours. The schedule tab was my main use for the PAX mobile app because I got to see the full agenda of panels and tournaments happening throughout the event. Once I found an event that stood out to me, I selected it, then added it onto my planner. When it was time for me to attend PAX, I then just navigated to the My Schedule tab to see what I had planned and where they were located. Exploring the Maps tab is also a good idea for non-scheduled events. You can go here to see the exact location of booths in the exposition hall. Throughout the expo, I was really hoping to find an Animal Crossing replacement game. For those of you who don't follow me on Twitter, I wasn't pleased with some of the things I ran into. This was a bummer because I really adored the game. Apico seemed to have the same Animal Crossing vibe. It's full of relaxing outdoor environments. It's a beekeeping sim game about breeding, collecting, and conserving bees. And they combined resource gathering, biology, and beekeeping minigames. They also included the pronouns for each character you talk to. Definitely a game I can see myself playing. 
They also have this cute pixelated B pin. Kanga was another game I stopped by because the art was just very mesmerizing. It's an ancient village builder game. Its environment, technology, and choices affect your community's culture and developing abilities. You have to always be on the lookout for weather changes so your village doesn't experience fires, floods, or any other natural disaster. Not only will weather become an inconvenience at times, but so will other tribes. You partake in battles to fulfill game challenges along the way. I did get a chance to talk to the developer, Eric, and I learned a lot about the production of the game. He was able to not only develop the game, but also create the design we see here today. Next, let's go into Tiny Build to take a look at Potion Craft. This was one of the most relaxing booths I stepped into. It had a mystical theme where people could demo the game while sitting on comfortable pillows around a cauldron. It's an alchemist simulator where you interact with tools, ingredients, and merchants to brew magical potions. You can create new recipes and intrigue your village to purchase your mixtures. It really does take you back to the medieval era, and the art is so beautiful. The Wreck was a decision-making game I checked out. We follow the story of a failed screenwriter, Junon, and they are able to relive the past, alter the present, and embrace the future. It's a visual novel about sisterhood, motherhood, grief, and survival. It was created by French developers and designers. Voyez où vos décisions vous mèneront. It was great seeing the VR game I Expect You to Die, giving us a nice throwback to my old video. What is this one? Seeing the Two Crowns newest release of Norse Lands definitely took me by surprise. I wasn't aware they put out a new land, and this is one of my favorite games to play, so I needed to see what was going on. Norse Lands has many new opponent types and new creatures to transport on to give us unique powers for the night. Cult of the Lamb by Devolver was consistently packed throughout the four-day gathering. The crowd was right about the hype though, because the game looked so fun. It blended cuteness with demonic themes and evil challenges. Your mission is to build your own loyal community of woodland worshippers to eventually become the biggest and most powerful cult in every mysterious region around you. While of course, effortlessly being the cutest group around. The Woodland Worshippers' grounds reminded me a lot of the Midsommar movie's environment, with similar tents, flowers, and bizarre joyful communities. Dead Cells is our next booth. I used to play this game a lot. It's a Metroidvania-inspired action platformer. They have really cool settings where you can choose the appearance of food in the game, aka your chosen diet. I was really intrigued with Melon Journey's art style, very pixelated and old school approach. This game allows you to take a journey throughout an adorable town where you get to meet various personalities while also unraveling the dark tale of crime and corruption among the community members. Tunic might have been the game that impressed me the most. I know it's a big claim, but it seems to have combined the highlights of some of my favorite games. I see a lot of similarities to Sackboy and Kirby's Epic Yarn. With Tunic, you get to try ancient powers, explore legendary lands, and have action-packed battles with brutal monsters. It has intricate paths, and it's perfect for the curious mind. They also had a pin of their adventurous fox. Now I want to talk about the PAX XP scavenger hunt. The first thing you do to enter is register your badge, because this is what you're going to be using to scan all the different XP kiosks that you're going to see throughout the exposition hall and throughout the entire building as well. When you do register your badge, you're going to either be assigned to Team Gabe or Team Tycho. I feel like that's really fun because you're constantly competing with different PAX attendees for total XP throughout the event. There are three chances of winning prizes, each of them going for a higher prize pool at the very end. So I'll break it down for you all. The first way you can gain prizes through the scavenger hunt is by getting the full eight kiosk counts. When you get all eight of them, you get what they called a mystery prize, which in this case was 
a pop socket for your phone. I'm gonna be honest with you, that was a little bit frustrating because I got to like the fourth day of the event, had almost reached the full trophies, and I was like, I don't know if I wanna make it. I went to the main lobby area to see what my prize was even gonna be. I found out that's what it was, and I was just like, I've been struggling for four days to find all these kiosks, and you're gonna offer me a pop socket? Anyway, moving on, the second way that you can gain prizes through the scavenger hunt is by swiping it on sponsored XP kiosks. Now, these are going to be in special booths throughout the exposition hall. One of them, for example, was Discord. I scanned mine and I luckily got a boost for the Discord channel. I meant to say I got Nitro for one month free. You get a lot of more specific prizes for those sponsored booths. Thirdly, and of course, the most exciting prize of them all, free tickets to the next year. PAX East. The way that you win this is a lot harder. First thing you have to do is be able to get more than five trophies total to even be entered in the raffle. But your team overall also has to win for you to even be entered in the first place. Even if I had collected more than five trophies, but Team Tycho had more XPs than Team Gabe, which was my team, I would not be entered. So it's a lot harder to even get raffled into it. Now it's time to talk about the different improvements that I think would be a good idea for next year's PAX event. I noticed when going into the retro console areas where all of the different consoles from various years were displayed, I think it would be fun to maybe have them organized periodically. So you have the oldest consoles on the left and then moving them onto the latest version so people can actually see that progress throughout the years. I think that would be a very fun way of displaying them. The second organizational idea that I had is for when tournaments are going on, I attended the Overcooked tournament. It was definitely a blast, but I would say that having people called in when it was their turn or their group to compete was a little bit challenging because the enforcers, they didn't even have a speaker or anything to call them. It was just kind of them shouting into a room. So maybe if they had a better system, either like paying them on their app, that's another thing that would be super easy for tournaments if people could sign up with their barcode from the PAX app. This way it would also enable them maybe to get notifications when it was their turn in the tournaments, but that could be something really fun to implement. And on top of that, if they could also organize the different consoles, maybe in different numerical forms. So when people are being called to compete in like station two, three or four or so on, it would just be more coordinated than being like, take that one and that one kind of thing. Another improvement is having the app contain a timestamp. No matter which time of the day you were looking at the schedule tab, it would default to the very top of the page showing you the morning events. It'd be nice to have it default to the current time of day and maybe even add in a red bar for the current time, which we commonly see on popular calendar apps. And lastly, it would be very helpful to have different signage throughout the exposition hall and just throughout the entire building as well for packs. I noticed that the actual map that we see on the app hasn't changed for the past events which is fine but i feel like throughout my experience at pax it was definitely a little bit challenging to get a hang of the map so having better signage to direct people where they're going and where they need to be would be a good touch as well for the next year but then again these are really just minor improvements that i'm pointing out i overall had such a great experience. PAX was one of the most fun events I've ever attended. It's joining everything I enjoy from gaming to seeing different anime characters that I watch to just bringing like all of our different interests together as a community. And that was a lot of fun. Our animal of the day is the snow leopard and the panthera genus. They live in the Himalayas. Snow leopards live in high alpine areas, mostly above the tree line and up to 18,000 feet in elevation. They are found in 12 countries, including China, Bhutan, Nepal, India, Pakistan, Russia, and Mongolia. They have long, thick tails that serve to balance them on rocks and to wrap around themselves for extra warmth. Their paws are big and fluffy, being perfect for padding on the harsh mountain rocks and as snowshoes for the winter times. They can jump up upwards of 50 feet in length, the length of three large SUVs. They're known as the ghost of the mountains due to their solitary life, shy demeanor, and their ease of blending into the mountain ranges due to their coat color. They're currently, sadly, a vulnerable species, estimated at around 5,000 snow leopards left in the wild. Their biggest threats are hunters, habitat loss, poaching, and climate change. The Himalayas are experiencing warmths of three times the global average, causing major disruptions to the big cat's home. 
World Wildlife is focused on reducing human leopard conflict and rural development, education for sustainable development, stopping mining in fragile snow leopard habitat, and the control of illegal wildlife trade. I'll add in their information in the description down below if you want to get involved and help. Thank you so much for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed walking through PAX Ease 2022 with me. If you did, don't forget to like down below. And if you enjoy this content, don't forget to subscribe. We really appreciate your support. And I also would love to hear your stories, either of the different cosplays that you enjoyed seeing in my video today, or what you would personally dress up as if you're attending next year's PAX. Are you going to maybe cosplay as your favorite anime character or best gaming MVP player? I wish. I had gone as Viper. I think that would have been an awesome costume and a fun way for me to show which Valorant player I main. I'll see you next time. Bye.